shave for a day. Then go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. For it isn't your mother, your father, or wife whose judgment upon you must pass, but the man whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you right to the end. And you've passed your most difficult test if the man in the glass is your friend. You can fool the whole world down the highway of years and take pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you cheated the man in the glass. When you stare in the mirror, who do you see? Can you see beyond the shell to what lies within? Are you proud of your accomplishments and your drive for success? Or do you worry about creating some false image for all others' eyes to see? Do you tremble and shake at the thought of failure? Do you set your sights low simply to avoid your own disappointment? Do you fear losing? Do you fear not finding success? Do you fear being shut down or ignored or not accepted or frowned upon or ostracized? Are you afraid? Any man can carry himself with strength and pride on the outside. Any man can look in the mirror and be satisfied simply with what they see on the surface. But he who is riddled with worries is nothing more than what the innermost fears of his heart will allow. To be satisfied looking strong on the outside, to be satisfied with false pride and false success, simply so those around you believe you to be great, well, that is hardly anything to be proud of. But if who you are outside is simply a representation of your passion within, well, then you are truly something special. Are you afraid of being a dreamer? For there are those men that fail to dream because they are far too afraid of the nightmares that may come. Those men that dream dreams and wake up scared to death that those dreams may, may be far too out of reach. To be one of many is to be nothing at all, but to stand out from the crowd, to be original, to not fear the masses, well, that is truly to be something special. Stop being afraid. If you dream dreams, demand that those dreams come true, and fight for those dreams, and believe in those dreams. Then you can never be limited. For dreams are not simply hopes and desires. They are not just dreams. They are tangible, and they are real, and they are everything that we make of them. For in our dreams, we behold our passions. In our dreams, we behold everything dear to us and every vision for greatness that we strive to attain. See, what you must realize is it's not about having greatness or being great. It's about striving for greatness. It's not a state of what is, but what could be. And that belief in what could be is what sustains the dreams and brings you past the fear. Do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your elders. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down through many generations. But when you find that something that is for the good and benefit of one and all, then believe in it and live up to it. Buddha. Don't you understand? You must take it upon yourself to find that passion, that deeply seated belief in the innermost depths of your soul. Find that belief and live up to it. With every ounce of your heart, strive to turn that belief into greatness. After all, it's not about saying you're great. It's not even about being great. It's about striving to be great. Because it's not in the destination, it's in the journey. It's, not in, it's in believing in the future and what comes next, and fighting with all the power in your body to get there. My brother Al, Sister Renee with girls, and distinguished guests, this is my last chance, the final time that I get to speak to you all, to share with you my thoughts and feelings, and to advise you on all those things I seek for this council in the future. So what does it mean? Does it mean that I speak for 10 or 15 minutes and move on? Does it mean that I say what I say and motivate you for a short time? And that tomorrow is a new day, with a new board and new leaders, and an entirely different vision for this council? Or do I somehow manage to put together the proper words, those words to explain and show what I feel and how I think. And, have to bestow upon, and to bestow upon you that knowledge and passion that will one day be the foundation for what you feel and what you think. I can only hope that what I say tonight will not be a temporary motivation. I can only wonder if what I, if what I say will resonate. But alas, I don't know. So the question becomes,
becomes, will you listen and will you believe? Or will it be that same last statement that each adult makes and then is soon forgotten? Tonight is not simply the state of this council. Tonight is one long challenge. A challenge for you to look back in that mirror and see something new. A challenge to find new horizons, adopt new perspectives, and begin to make change for the better. A challenge to step up, to rise to the occasion, and to take action. No more waiting, no more watching. Tonight, I challenge you to take the reins and lead the way.